Today I'm going to show you in Thunkable how we can translate text directly from French into English. Bonjour, je peux parler le français. And have it speak it aloud. Thunkable has some really amazing, powerful, built-in tools like text-to-speech and translation. So let's get started and figure out how to do it. Okay, here I am at my Thunkable main screen. I'm going to go ahead and create a new app, and I'm going to call it Translator. I'm going to call it Translator 2, because I already made Translator 1. And I'm going to put it under the, under the category of just testing. Now, there are lots of... Uh, last In my last video, we tried the drag-and-drop interface. There are some interface tools that are not available in yet uh, in the drag and drop interface. So we're not going to use that today. So it's important to leave this box unchecked for this project. I'm going to go ahead and click create. All right. So one of the coolest things about this project is the text to speech. So we're going to start off just learning how that works. We have a list of components. We already looked at buttons, labels, and text inputs the other day, but there's a whole ton more. If you scroll down, you can look. Uh, and under voice, there's a text to speech one. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag that onto my screen, onto my project here. And when I do that, nothing uh, happens on the screen, but down here, you'll see a text to speech icon appears. So it's an invisible component. It means it doesn't visually change anything on the screen. And uh, the only option that it has is to choose what the default language is. So if we're going to translate from English into another language, for example, French, we'll go ahead and click the language we want it to speak in. So I'm going to have it speak in French. The next thing we're going to do is go up and find and drag a button onto the screen. And we'll drop it on our screen. It'll take a moment. Now, unlike the drag and drop thing, we can't drag our button around. It's just going to stay where it is. And if we want to move its location or size on the screen, we do that down here uh, with with some settings. So I can say it's, uh, it's um, size and all that down here. So for example, let's make it... Uh, Where's its size? Padding, margins, maybe it's under advanced. Oh yeah, positioning and spacing. So let's uh, let's go to the sizing here. Let's make our button bigger. Uh, I'm going to make it 80% of my screen. So it's a nice wide button, easy to push on a phone. There we go. Uh, I'll go back to simple. And right now it's, it says button. So let's, for now, leave that. And let's just get our, our button talking to begin with. So I'm going to go into blocks here. And the event we want to trigger this whole thing is a button push. So I'm going to go into button, the button drawer here, and say when button one is clicked, that's when we want something to happen. So what do we want to happen? Well, we've added our text to speech um, component to our project. So now we have the text to speech drawer in our code and we'll have it call our text to speech and we'll have it speak something. So we'll go ahead and drag that over here like that. Right now, it's just going to say hello. Well, we've set it to French, so we better have it say a bonjour. And uh, let's just do a live test and make sure it works. Live test. Uh, show up over here. I'll push my button, and fingers crossed. Bonjour. Oh, fantastic. C'est fantastic. All right. It's working. That's great. So we have a button. It says bonjour. That's amazing. Let's go back to our design. But we want to be able to have it speak anything in French, and we want to be able to type whatever it is we're um, wanting it to say in English, it will automatically translate it for us and then speak. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my label in here. We're going to have a label and we're going to have a text input. So sometimes things uh, are a little sluggish, but there it is. Okay, so there's label and button, and we also need a text input again. So I'll drag that in. Okay, so these things are not in the right order. And again, we're not in our drag and drop 
uh, version of Thunkable, but that's okay. We can change the order of things up here. So I, I, I want my label above my text input. So I'll drag that up here. And now it goes label, uh, type here, and button. I want them all to be the same size as well. So I'll click on each one of them one at a time. I'm going to go to advanced, and I'm going to go to sizing, and I'm going to make its width 80%, just like I did for my button. That way they're all going to be the same. Looks like this one's already the right size. Let's just check. Yeah, it's already 80%, and my button is also 80%. I'm looking in the wrong spot. Where am I? Spacing, sizing, sorry, 80%. Okay, the next thing I want to do is these are all kind of crowded together. Um, I want to change and, and make them a little more spaced out. So I'm going to click on these, this one, and go to, I think, spacing. Let's add a bottom margin of maybe 10 pixels. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. 10 pixels, yeah, that looks good. Now they're not so crowded. So again, um, I'll click on the text input and go to spacing and 10 pixels. Okay, so we've got our button and our text input and our label. We want to be able to type here and have it translate into French, and that French uh, will appear here. Let's actually make this a little taller as well. So I'll go ahead and click on my label one more time, go to sizing, and we said it's 80% of the screen wide, but let's um, make a minimum width, sorry, a minimum height, a height of uh, what? I don't know, let's see what 100 looks like. That's pretty good. That way, if we type something longer than a few words, it still has room to appear here on our label. All right. We're going to look under components again and scroll down until we find the translator. Here it is here. I could also just type in this box, translator, to find it. And again, I pick it up and drop it on my screen. And again, this is going to be another invisible component. It means it'll appear down here as an icon but it won't change the appearance of anything on my screen. So let's click on our translator, go over here to simple, and here are the settings we can change here. So it wants to know what is our source language and what's our target language. So our source language is going to be English. Uh, it has a few different English options. Oh, I thought it did. Nope, it has US English, that's fine. Uh, we're going to go to target language. We're going to choose French. And that is great. So we've got those settings set up. Let's go back to code. So yesterday, we learned how to type something in the box and have it appear in the label here. And so we're going to do um, when we push the button. And so there's some similarities to what we did yesterday. I'm going to go here under blocks. And for now, I'm just going to get rid of my speech. I'll just drop it over here because we'll use it again in a minute. But we don't want it to get in the way while we're figuring out how to do the translation. So what do we need to do? We're going to go into our translator component drawer and we are going to call the translator and have it translate something. So I'm going to pick this thing up here. You'll notice the block gets way bigger. And let me explain a little bit how it works. So it calls the translator and it has different functions. Uh, it only has one function in this case, though. It's translate. And it translates right now. It'll translate the word hello. And then it has um, an output, which is the result. So if I was to write hello, it should write bonjour as the result in French. It also has a status where we can check, like, you know, um, has it, is it, was it successful, that kind of thing. And then it wants to know, what is it we want to do with this when we're done translating? Well, let's just keep everything as is and do a test. So I want to change my label. I'm going to go ahead and change my label. So I'll click here on my label drawer, and we want to set the label's text to something. So I'll go ahead and drag that in here. So we're going to change our label. Remember, our label is this here. Uh, and for now, we're just going to leave this as hello. And we want to change the label's text not to read label and not to read hello, but to read the result of the translation. So I'll go ahead and grab. I can just grab this block as many times as I need to use it within, uh, within this call of the translator thing. So anything that's within this purple bracket, we can use this result. So... Let's test it out. Let's go to our live test. And now when I push my button, it should put, it should go and translate the word hello to bonjour and make that appear up here in the label. Let's find out if that works. Fantastic, it's working. Okay, but we don't wanna just translate the word hello. We wanna take whatever is in our text input and translate that instead. 
So I'm going to go into my uh, text input drawer, which is right here, and we want to get the text from the text input. So here it says text input one's text. I'm going to grab that, and that's the text we want to translate. We don't want to translate hello. It's important you make sure that it clicks in. It almost didn't work for me. So now it's going to go, and when we push our button, it's going to translate whatever is in our text input, and that result is going to go into our label. Let's test that. I like to test every step just to make sure everything's working as I anticipated. Uh, how are you? Question mark. Comment et vous? My wife, who speaks French, tells me this is rather formal. But anyway, uh, seeing as I don't really speak French, uh, I'm going to just be really happy with this translation. This could help me on my next vacation to France. All right. Finally, we want it to speak aloud the translation. So here before we were calling uh, our text to speech and we were having it translate bonjour uh, and say bonjour for us. So what I'm going to do is drag this within my call the translator block because we want to use this result here. So I'm going to pick up my result and instead of saying bonjour, we want it to say speak aloud the result of the translation. So now just to walk through again, when our button is pushed, it translates whatever's in our text input and it has our result and a status. We can get that result and change the text, which is in label one to the result. And then we call our text to speech function and it speaks aloud the result. Let's test it out. I'm going to go to live test. I'm going to type something in French here. I love pizza. J'aime la pizza. It's true, I do. J'aime les chats. Mais j'adore les chiens. There you go. That is our text translation app. Here's the last thing I want to show you, and this is pretty cool. Um, Thunkable is a great platform for rapid prototyping and app development for a lot of reasons, but one of those reasons is that you can preview you can preview your app live on your phone. If you download the Thunkable app and log in with your Google account, you will see your app and you can give it a try. So here's my translator here. I can type in the box. Push translate. Comment est? Où est le musée? And you can use your translator app when we're able to travel again in the world. So I really like that about Thunkable. You have to log in with your Google account. Don't forget that, but you can you can test out all your apps here right in the Thunkable app on your phone or iPad or Android phone or Android tablet. It works on all of those platforms. It's pretty amazing.